fine. Uh, it used to be a time where when things would like, you know, technical difficulties and stuff would happen, I would get really upset. I mean, I would be like, oh, you know, really? like this stuff yeah. better work, you know? And God just over the time has just been like, this isn't your game to worry about here. And he said, even through it, and he just showed it to me earlier this uh, this this morning, like as the service was happening. Mm -hmm. Storms are coming all of a sudden. Disciples are in boat with Jesus. We're gonna die. He says, Really? I'm here with you. Yeah. What are you worried about? Right. Right? Yeah, we'll so yeah. we will work through things, we will go through things, but the bottom line is it's not necessarily what happens to us, it's how we handle it. Mm -hmm. You guys with me on that? Amen. It's not what happens to you, it's how you Amen. handle it. Amen. And it, it doesn't surprise me one bit when um, we have things like this, like my throat all of a sudden. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like that Sorry, I hate to do that on camera, but. That happened last week, too. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Because the enemy doesn't want things to go, go forward. Mm -hmm. And whenever Jesus would go and do something, he would try to oppose him. Yeah. Well, guess what? If you're a follower of Jesus, guess what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. You're on the opposite team now. It's not a matter of if it happens. It's a matter of when it happens and then how you get through it. Amen? Amen. So, um, honey, do you have the slides up? Yeah, it's coming. <laughs> it's I have kinds of things like, to say, careful. You were coming. All right. <laughs> and we're trying a new platform here, so... We were working out some kinks last night, but uh, but the bottom line is, guys, today, before the, the, the sermon gets up on the screen, here's what I want you to think about, okay? Um, taking a look at... What is that? Put your password in, everybody will see it. We're good. Oh. No, we can't. And this is the, the, it's moments like this that humble you constantly. But the bottom line is this: power in the name of Jesus. That's right. We're good. All right. Why is it making me such a big smile? I don't know. Right. You're fine. Thank you, Jesus. We're good. Thank you, Jesus. So, rather than distractions on this, okay? Focus right here for me for a minute. All right. Look at my beautiful face. Oh, Lord. <laughs> All right. What? So the bottom line is this. When you think about the world around you and you hear what's going on and you see what's happening, this is a question for all of you. I'm just going to put it out there. Okay. Do you think that people are taking accountability for themselves more now or less? Less accountability. Less. Less? Mm -hmm. yeah. Seth, can you sit down, please? Mm -hmm. It's all right. Good sit down. <laughs> People here can't see. So, this is a test for everyone. We're not going to worry about this. Okay. Because if I shut this down right now, the Holy Spirit's still going to do something here. Mm -hmm. Don't look at this. Yeah. Okay? Okay. All right? Focus. It's not what happens to us. It's how we handle it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You play through things that come at you, you get stronger. Yes. Life doesn't necessarily go the way you think it's supposed to go every step of the way. And especially as you get older, because your eyes are still here. Yeah. <laughs> right here. Okay. All right? Right here. Well, you have to show okay. That's all right. It's okay. We got it. But what I'm saying is, is that more and more in, in the world, we see that people are trying to deflect their problems on others. They're trying to push them onto others. Uh -huh. Instead of taking accountability for ourselves and saying, you know what? What can I do to do better? What can I do to actually like move the ball forward? Uh -huh. If you're in a corporate environment, you're working for a company, you're working a job, okay? And what's the first thing that usually happens when a problem goes on? 
Many times people try to cover themselves, don't they? Right? They start looking out for their own backside. I'm cleaning it up here, okay? You get my point? Mm -hmm. and, and what happens is you start seeing the blame game unfold. So like, okay, true story. Um, had a situation a while back when I was working for the old wheat and glass. And a shipment of glass shipped that should not have. Now, when you ship a full truckload, a 48-footer, actually it was a 53, it was a bigger one. Because when Pastor does a mistake, he goes all the way. And so, it was a big 53-footer, it was full of glassware that was supposed to go to a pharmaceutical company, a major pharmaceutical company. The problem is, it wasn't supposed to go. And when it released, I didn't watch it, but something happened in the computer. Someone from another department let it go. Nobody caught it and said, you know, this is an early shipment. Are you sure about this? And it went out. And guess what? It got refused. Oh, but wait, there's more. As it got refused, it came back with damage. Right, Judy? Of course. <laughs> It's bad enough the whole thing goes out. It's bad enough that you got to spend all the money and gas and everything else to go ship it. Mm. And when you ship like glass, it weighs a lot more oh, than yeah. plastic. It's mm -hmm. one of the reasons why people converted to plastic a lot. So when you ship it, you also take you run the risk of getting glass damaged from being jostled around or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so the first thing that people started doing was, who did this? And I'm looking at it, and my face is turning pale. And I'm like, oh my goodness. I should have caught that, but I didn't realize that the computer was just going to let it go. Mm -hmm. And so there were multiple departments that were involved in this. But the buck stops here. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking to myself, I'm going to have a job today. <clears throat> and the initial reaction that I had to this was, Maybe I'll just blame it on shipping. I'll blame it on the computer. I'll blame it on whoever. Yeah. I gotta keep my job. My kids are young. You know, we're, we're this is pre-ministry, and you know, I'm like, I gotta keep my job. And all of a sudden, a barrage of emails started coming, and they do this thing called BCC, which is called blind co carbon copy, which means they send it to a whole bunch of other people that you don't know about that are higher up, and whatever you put on that message, everyone sees it, <laughs> and so. Steve had to be really careful of what he said because there were higher ups that I didn't know about were on that email. And if I said, hey, you know, actually I did it, but don't tell anybody, I'm done. Mm -hmm. But then I had to go into my boss and my boss says to me, listen, what really happened? I said, well, look, I'm going to come clean. It released it in the system, but I should have been watching over it. I should have flagged it the minute it started to print in the warehouse. I should have stopped it right there and said, you know what, guys, rip that up. I'm going to change the date in the system, and we'll, we'll make sure it goes out the normal way. And instead, it led, led to a whole thing. Here's what he said. He said, Steve, you know that that's part of your job, right? Yep. He goes, you know you could be fired right now, right? Yep. He goes, I went to bat for you because I see day in and day out how hard you work here. He says, I went, I, I went to bat because they wanted your head on the platter. Mm. He said, but I'm going to make sure that you stay here. But I need you to do me one favor. You've got to pay attention to details. You've got to pay attention to this. A human mistake can happen, but this was a big one. And it cost the company a lot of money. And they're going to have to do what they call resort, which means they have to take certain wear off the pallets and they have to sort them by hand, the good bottles versus the bad bottles. Mm -hmm. Now, this is just a starter thing here, okay? We're going to get into this subject today. I'm going to explain to you what this sign is. And I actually stumbled across this. And I love how the Holy Spirit just does this. All right? It's called, the title of the sermon is called The Buck Stops Here. And I'm sure you've heard that saying, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Now, I don't know exactly where this comes from, but this sign was, I'll give you the details in a minute, but the back of it says, I'm from Missouri. There's a backstory to this. So honey, if you could just tap the next uh, slide here. 
Okay. So the sign the buck stops here that was on President Harry S. Truman's desk in his White House office was made in the Federal Reformatory at El Reno, Oklahoma. Fred A. Canfield, I have no idea who these people are, then United States Marshal for the Western District of Missouri, and a friend of Mr. Truman saw a sign, a similar sign while visiting the reformatory and asked the warden if a sign like it could be made for the president. The sign was made and mailed to the president on October 2nd, 1945. Next slide. Approximately two and, and a half inches uh, by 13 inches in size and mounted on a walnut base. The painted glass sign has the words, I'm from Missouri on the reverse side, and it appeared at different times on his desk until late in his administration. The saying, the buck stops here, derives from the slang expression, pass the buck. Now, I didn't know this. Which means passing the responsibility on to someone else. That part I knew, but this part I didn't. The latter expression is said to have originated with the game of poker, in which a marker or counter, frequently in frontier days, a knife with a buckhorn handle, was used to indicate the person whose turn it was to deal. You know what I mean? Like it was a knife, and whenever somebody was time for them to deal, they would slide this knife over, and that would that would say, "Okay, your turn. Pass the buck." Hmm. Okay. Right? Sure. Um, if the player did not wish to deal, he could pass the responsibility by passing the buck. As the counter came to be called to the next player. Next slide, please. On more than one occasion, President Truman referred to the death sign in public statements. For example, in an address at the National War College on December 19, 1952, Mr. Truman said, you know, it's easy for the Monday morning quarterback to say what the coach should have done after the game is over. But when a decision is up before you, and on my desk I have the motto which says the buck stops here, the decision has to be made. In his farewell address to the American people, given in January 1953, President Truman referred to his, this concept very specifically in asserting that the president, whoever he is, has to decide. <clears throat> he can't pass the buck to anybody. No one else can do the deciding for him. That's his job. Mm -hmm. I think we've lost that as a society. Now, it's unfair to make it where everybody's like this because I haven't met millions of people. So it's easy to come up and just say, I just think nobody does. No, that's not true. But if you turn on the little television or YouTube or whatever, and you look at what's going on out there, how many decision makers do we really have in society? Too many. Too many. No, I mean not enough. I'm talking about people who are make tough decisions. I'm not talking about bosses. I'm not talking about managers. I'm talking about leaders. Governors. Yeah. There's a difference between a manager and a leader. A manager says, here's the system, we're just going to play in it. A leader gets, a, gets something that pops up and it's like, whoa, we got a big decision to make. And somebody's got to do it. Somebody's got to make the call. Somebody's got to step up and make a difficult decision. And it may catch them flat. You change an operating system and all of a sudden things don't work right. It stops right here. <laughs> there's, there's no other. It's right here. Okay. We change something in the service. It stops right here. Right. When you make decisions in your life and God says, here I'm putting something before you, are you willing to make tough calls? Even in the face of it, and you know that whatever you decide, it may not go well. Mm. Is anybody here with me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Amen. You know, Pastor Tom and I have talked many times about World War II and the, the heroicism, and there's just so many stories. And it's not just World War II. You know, it's not that I want to diminish our, our, um, our army and you know, our armed forces because there are many other battles. And tough calls have to be made. But take war aside for a second. I'm talking about President Truman made a decision to drop two bombs on Japan. And those bombs leveled and killed millions of people that were literally one minute standing here and the next minute there was a burn mark of what used to be them. Wow. 
because they evaporated. It, it just basically just wiped them right instantly.